was a big fight among the scientists. And the second column shows that they rearranged this a little bit. And that's because somebody said, oh, this should really be a pre-kingdom system. Because it doesn't define exactly the way it should. So they had a big argument about that. And then they continued to argue about it. And so column number three, which I do have a circle around, shows a three-kingdom system. When that showed up, uh, the kingdom that was added was Protista. And they were trying to say, this is this means very, very primitive, but organisms. So in the Protista, they put the bacteria, cyanobacteria, but look, they also stuck the protozoa in there. Now that's a little crazy, because the protozoa have membranes, and the bacteria have walls. So of course they thought about that for a while, and those proponents said the plants should include only the algae and the multicellular plants outside, the bryophytes and the tracheophytes. They treat the tracheophytes. And that in the animal kingdom, you should only have multicellular animals. So they threw the protozoa out of the animal kingdom, shoved it up into the protista, but that made people angry also because it didn't actually conform to what reality was. So they started yelling and screaming about, no, there should be a four kingdom system. We should really have four kingdoms. In the four kingdom system, they separated out the bacteria, and they were the prokaryota. Then they said in the protista, we should only have the algae and the protozoans and the fungi. But everybody got crazy about that, too. They wanted only the plants to contain the bryophytes and the tracheophytes. But they all agreed then that multicellular animals should be in there. So this has been going on for a very, very long time. If you look at the right hand column, Linnaeus was 1753 to designate animals and plants. Then Heckel comes along over 100 years later and says, no, no, the three kingdom system should be animals, plants, and proteins. Then Whitaker comes along in 1969 and says, no, this is not going to work. You have to have five kingdoms, because that's the real true designation. So in 1969, Whitaker says the five kingdoms should be, and that's the, the fifth column on the right circle, that is the five kingdom system. He had prokaryotes. Whitaker had prokaryotes, which he called the Monera, and that was only bacteria and cyanobacteria. Then he said there are very primitive forms that should be the protista. That included the protozoa, a couple of algal samples, and a few molds. And then he said, oh, what you should do is separate out all the rest of the yeast and molds into a whole new kingdom. So the five kingdom system introduced fungi as their own kingdom. Fungi are not true plants because they have no leaves, stems, or roots. So they said, no, you have to put this aside. No leaves, no stems, no roots. This was a big deal to make them put them aside, and that's exactly what he did. All the yeasts and molds went into that. And then the plants <coughs> included all the plants, every one of the plants, the bryophytes and the tracheophytes. And finally, at the top were the multicellular and the and so that's the one um, that has been accepted. <coughs> Excuse me. That has been accepted pretty much since the late 70s. Nobody else has come up with another argument that they want to put forward. So that's the one that's in place today. And we should be able to find our seven groups of organisms, subtract the virus from it, and put the other six into this category. So 
In the prokaryotes would be uh, the mycoplasma, the rickettsia, and the bacteria, because they have the greatest similarity. Mm -hmm. The proteases, we're going to put the protozoans in the proteases. The plants get all the algae. The fungi get their own whole phylum, whole kingdom rather, and the animals stay with the multicellular animals. That's the acceptance that we are working on now. Well, you can see that um, in 1978, along comes a guy named Wolsey, and he says, nah, you got this all wrong, 1978. Because it's not adequate enough. It doesn't explain everything the way it should be explained, and that's according to structure. So what Wolsey said is, let's pay attention to structure. Let's pay attention to the cell structure. If you have a true nucleus, then you should be in a group that is simply called the eukaryota. And that's the number one there. The eukaryotes. Now who are the eukaryotes according to our group? Who's in a eukaryotic organization? Protozoa, fungi, algae, virus. No, no viruses because they don't have any uh, nuclei or cell structures. So that's where they would be according to Bose. And that means that would be all of the eukaryotic organisms. And he pays attention <coughs> to the structure of the cell. <coughs> so he bases his work on cell structure. And probably that makes the most sense. Because that's the way your life will work, according to your cell structure. But then he's stuck with the uh, prokaryotes that don't have a nucleus, and he has to worry about what to do with them, or what to do with bacteria. <coughs> So he says that there really should be three kingdoms. The eukaryotes, which is everybody that has a true nucleus. And then the prokaryotes need to be separated into what would be almost a modern form and an ancient form. So he said one kingdom should be the new bacteriality. or the new bacteria. Because by that time, it was known um, that these particular uh, organisms, the prokaryotic organisms, have walls that are made up of special stuff, and that is peptidoglycan. So the new bacteriales have a lot of peptidoglycan in their walls. That's the interesting thing that allows the gram stain to work. So these prokaryotes in the eubacteriales have peptidoglycan in their walls, but others have more membrane-formed wall types, membrane-related wall types with little so in the new bacteriales, which are the modern organisms, the ones that have evolved, he defines those that have peptidoglycan in the walls, a lot of it, and then those that have very little, that are more into membrane structures. And how this turns out is that the ones with the peptidoglycan these are gram positive, and the others are gram negative. Because the gram stain looks for that one molecule, which is peptidoglycan. It's a complex polysaccharide. Thank you. And the gram staining process looks for peptidoglycan 
It forms a chemical bond, a physical bond, a physiological bond with the peptidoglycan. And the gram-negative organisms can't do that because they don't have enough peptidoglycan to grab onto the staining technique. So I said to you that the gram stain is the industry standard and always will be because it's the dividing line between bacteria. The dividing line. You are either gram-negative or you're gram-positive. And then, of course, I have to tell you there are exceptions that don't pick up the gram stain. So those will be the funny organisms that are acid fast. They need a special stain. Well, um, if you don't have peptidoglycan at all, then you end up in the RPA bacteriality. The RPA bacteriality. 